Have you noticed that lots of women who are running alone have been abducted and killed oh, and are missing recently? Uh, I've noticed that the awareness is on the uptick that's been happening for some time. Yes, it's gross. <laughs> it's sad and awful. What the fuck is yeah. happening? It's I get you've no for respect for our bodies, but at least we got to keep them when you were done. No, with them. the big problem You're taking them now. The big problem is I'm not really sure how I stumbled into a universe that includes so many healthy, early morning, active, exercising people. But I have, <laughs> and all of them are outraged that the focus is even for a millisecond on. But why was she running alone at 4.30 in the morning? And the answer is because fuck you. Because she's too busy baking your cupcakes for your school project. She's too busy making your lunch for school. She's too busy cleaning the house and hosing down the countertops. She's going to her own job. She has her own fucking shit to do. And like Marnie, when she's like, I think I'm going to get a job in college. And I said, when the fuck are you going to do that? I know your schedule. I live with you. And she said, well, from four to six in the morning, they need people to make bagels. And I said, those aren't even awake hours. But if you want to get shit done or you want self-care is not selfish. So if she chose self-care at the only hours where she wasn't doing shit for someone fucking else, don't you dare ask me why she's up at that hour. And uh, all valid and also all irrelevant. She might like peeling grapes on her front porch naked at two in the morning let her do it the reality is we should all be safe on this planet to do things that aren't harming others she had it coming like is that it it is it is being it is criticized when people comment on the hour as similar to when people talk about the clothing or the habits or the actions or behaviors of a woman who was sexually assaulted in any circumstance at any time. As if Victim as blaming, if any is- of that was fucking relevant. Because the answer is, it ain't. A click, a dick, a click, a dick, a dick, a dick, a click, a dick, a dick, a dick, a click, a click, a dick, a dick, a ding, ding, dong, a dong, ding, a dick, a dick, a Pulling an Amy. I've got a guy for that. And is it too early for resolutions? All this and more on today's Brilliant Observations. Do, 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 do. Did you hear the snot form in the back? I heard down? some delightful <laughs> guttural sounds that I find artisanal and, and charming. And I'm artisanal. super excited. <laughs> artisanal guttural sound. <laughs> Hi, Amy. How are Good you? Good morrow, Melissa. I am. How, go- I am, how goes it? I am. I am. It goes, it goes pretty well. I think it goes pretty well. I was geared up anticipating a potentially bump a bump a bump bump morning. And it was not super smooth, but it was also not problematic. So I'm going to claim it and be excited. Yay. Good job. Good job, team. We had the elder teen who still lives with us uh, away for the weekend at a glorious, crazy, not glamping, but still somehow it felt like a glamping camping visit with friend all weekend. So off schedule and tired and pie eyed and all the things that you do when you have these great experiences. And I just thought, yeah, reentry is going to suck. Tomorrow's going to suck. Yeah. <laughs> and we had the little one who's been trying to get over something seems just like sinuses, but we've got some travel coming up. So we're like, yeah, you're not going anywhere this weekend. And then by the end of the weekend, he was close to 90% himself because he was starting to annoy us like bouncing balls in the house and hey Mia what do you say what do you say what do you say it's like go somewhere else talk to someone else what I recognize now why you need so much physical activity okay and then husband had a surprise procedure that you know kept us in the fast med all morning so he was out of sorts and on percocets so this morning was going to be super fun and everybody got off on time and I've already had two count them two meetings and here I am with you my love yes I see the eyes would you like to go back to that middle one Loretta what happened? <laughs> what 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 on earth? Well, I feel like it's a marital thing that we need to discuss here. My husband is not oh, I love these. is not a stoic. He's not. He's not someone who is going to just soldier through. So if there's something wrong, he'll tell you about it. He's a he's a good and normal person, right? However, he had what he thought was a blood blister on his side. And it was kind of weird. Like, why would you get a blood blister there? He thought he pinched something, right? And he noticed it and it was uncomfortable. And then over the span of two days, 
it got significantly larger very fast, and the entire area, grapefruit-sized, was red and inflamed. So it's like clearly there's an infection there. And because we have some travel coming up, and also because I don't know why, he decided to not tell me that he thought he had a tumor until after we got back from Chicago because he didn't want to ruin the trip. What? What? First of all, if you think you have a tumor, that's the first thing that you're supposed to tell your spouse. That's why you have a spouse, for tumor talk. That's the only reason you get married. That's the only reason. There's no other reason for marriage. 100% is for talking about tumors. So he didn't want you to know that he had an enormous blister on his side until after your travel. Well, it started out as what he thought was a blood blister. And he thought, that's weird. I don't like that. How did I maybe have that happen? Did I get pinched somehow? And then over the course of two days, it doubled in size and grew into a giant red thing. And he thought, what the fuck is this happening in my alien body? I don't like it. Now what the fuck am I going to do? I got a whole life to lead here. I don't want to worry anybody. I don't even know what this is. Let's just deal with it when we get back from Chicago. That was his stupid plan. It was a stupid plan. And then on day three, you know, two and a half to three of the ouchies of this thing, I said, what are you doing? Why are you not going and doing all these social things? What is the matter with you? And then he fessed up. He said, I'm just not feeling well. I've got this thing. Come to find out. I looked at it and I'm like, yeah, I don't think that's what you think it is. So at this point, it was Saturday evening. We stayed home from our Saturday evening plans. And first light on Sunday went to the med spa, whatever it's called, the fast med, and come to find out it was an infected cyst and that needed to be removed. So it was removed. Ta-da! Now he's fine. Then and there, they did it right then and there and didn't give you a referral to somewhere else with a... No, it was the kind of thing where it was because you could see the blood on the outside, this was something that was going to rupture. So they, they clinically drained it. And then removed it. It's called an IND. It's exactly it's what they did. Fucking gross, and it's expensive. And then they <laughs> so. and then they packed it, and then off we go. So there we go. So he's got packing in him, which is super yeah. gross. And now he's got to go yeah. back to this Cracker Jack factory. I'm sure they're great. Uh, it's only gross when you have to change it. So. Well, you know, I'm sure he loves me sharing all of these details with everybody. He won't listen. I found that all of my unwitting experience with pimple popper TikTok really prepared me for this experience in an interesting way. I was watching and engaged and, you know, I got to see him Did do all the, the things. Did you get the full sack around it? Because if you didn't get the full sack, this cyst could reform it and I don't want that to happen. It had ruptured and he pulled the pieces out and kept them and was trying to show Brian and Brian covered his face and said, I don't want that near me. Go Did Brian away. Say, I can't eat an orange or talk it, about an eyeball. I don't know I do what the dude was doing this. when Brian's full hand was over his full face and the guy's still trying to like get it around his hand. I'm like, here's <laughs> here's a little body language tip. When the client is covering their eyes, they don't wish to see the medical miracle you've pulled from their side. Yeah, or no. smell. Yeah, I no. mean, I'm going to yeah. imagine what you had stuck in there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was, that was part of it too. Amy. Ma'am. My love. Ma'am. If somebody told you... Oh my God, I pulled an Amy. Okay. What would that mean to you? What does that mean? You, what would that? Yeah, first of all, I'm filled with dread. It, 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 I start to get a little clammy, sweaty. I think, yeah. and then I think, this can't be good. This absolutely can't be good. I think nothing could be worse than what they're about to tell me. And that's it. That's all my thought. I don't, I don't even begin to envision how bad it'll be, just that it will if, be bad and I won't like it. If I heard somebody say, I pulled an Amy... I would think, did you order deliciousness for the table? <laughs> did that you... didn't even cross my mind. <laughs> really? No. Oh, that's so funny. It's so different how people see you and you see yourself. Um, I would think that you, here are typical Amy things that I think fall into the pulled in Amy. Uh, traveling with friends, but getting there three days early so you could case the place and know all the all the things because <laughs> that's what you do. Uh, order for the table the exact right things and you might do that by ordering everything I don't really know your secret but when I taste the things that look good that you ordered I'm thrilled I actually did um, that just on Saturday that's what's so funny did you really it's, yes it's and a whole and a whole different group of friends we were assembled and of course my husband wasn't there which was quizzical and I believed him when he said he just wanted to stay home and watch football even though it wasn't really an important football game and normally he would never do that 
But I was like, okay. So meanwhile, he was home lying about his ouchy side. So yeah, Pain, so we right. yeah, so we went to we went out and we were having on the patio beautiful day cocktails and snicky snack and everybody was staring at the menu like it was written in Chinese and I just you know motioned to the waiter and I said we're gonna get these two things and then when you come back and another bottle of prosecco and then when you come back we'll actually order and they looked at me and I said yes and he walked away and it was perfect. <laughs> anyway. I mean, to the point where when we were in New Hampshire, it was the not just the perfect food. It was the right amount of food. Like it just I don't know. So that to me would be pulling an Amy. Well, and that I, I like. OK, if that's true, then I like that. So take your dread and put it in your dread pocket and put that po- <laughs> zip out up because this put pocket has a dread special locks. zipper. Yes. OK. Lock it up I like in it. your dreadlocks. Do you think that's how they got their name? I don't. I dread showering. All right, then don't. <laughs> Something's happening to my hair. Yeah, to your locks. They're dreadlocks. So you don't have to dread shout. No. I don't know. I don't know. I don't think those are right, but I don't know. Um, I don't know. If somebody was pulling a Melissa, I really feel like it would be, again, now I feel your dread, right? Like, right. Because oh now this you think, oh, positive... blah, 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 blah. what are my worst qualities that people are going to call me out for? Oh, not returning a text? That's probably pulling a Melissa. Like uh, you don't do that as much anymore. Getting, well, well, getting a text and having to think about it, and not writing back right away, and then <laughs> overthinking it, and then forgetting it came in, and then not answering at all, and being like, "I thought we had lunch plans." Well, you didn't answer me. I'm like, "Well, it said see you tomorrow," and I didn't say, "Oh no, 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 I can't make it." It that's a yes. Like there are a few people left in my life. I end sentence, right? There are a few people left in my life, period. <laughs> there are even fewer who don't understand the, I haven't heard from her. I'm confident she still loves me and that she will be at breakfast today. Like those, the numbers are dwindling. But if you are one of those numbers, let me tell you, there's a reason for that. And I love you. Count yourself uh, and to your fucking listener, lucky. You're one of those. You're one of those people. Oh, charming. Um, Stuart has a, a thing. Well, do you have something for me finishing that topic, that pulling a Melissa? Do you have any? Uh, pulling a Melissa no. is w- receiving. It's hard for me to figure. I know exactly what it is, but I'm trying to figure out how, when I would use the phrase, oh, she pulled a Melissa. That's when you drop ship an unexpected luxury oh, yeah. gift to someone and don't fucking sign it. So that the recipient gets it and says, what the fuck is this? Oh, it's from, check your mailbox it's from Melissa. <laughs> check so your that's mailbox. pulling a Melissa. There's one on the way. And I think that's <laughs> lovely. So I'll, I'll take that. <laughs> that's pulling. A Melissa. Stuart, Stuart has this thing. I'll take it. I love it. Has this thing where, you know, he's a professional in a very specific field. And I'm he told do, he's a pillar he of do, the community. Oh, fuck. He doesn't do plumbing. <laughs> he doesn't do car repair. He doesn't do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jack of all trades, master of none. No, master of one trade, go fuck yourself on the other trades. So he has a phrase we've always used, and it is, oh, I've got a guy for that. I've got a guy for that. And for that, I am grateful. And we have, we used to have a network of guys. We have fewer now, but we've got a guy for that. And I discovered a gap in the grout in our shower, and I discovered that Mallory had been showering with the same gap. I'm like, is all of this water going to be dripping out of the first floor? Like, what is happening? Does nobody look around or open their eyes in the shower anymore? So is this something that a, I'm not going to say a handy person, but a, a third of a handy person could get that little caulk gun that even my father had? Uh, at Kenny, can and with his finger, gloved if you want. I, I've seen where you put your fingers. You can use it on caulking. Just like caulk the edges of things. Is that how? And he said, no, I've got a guy for that. So he called our guy. Our guy's Greg. Greg is fantastic. He built that shower. And eight years later, it's the caulk, the settle house settling. I don't even know what the fuck did it, but needs to be regrouted. And we regrouted for he. We called our guy for that. He came and he fixed the shower. And while you're here, another shower. And while you're here, can you do this? And I gave him a punch list like he was my husband. Well, my husband doesn't do that. So I gave him my punch list like he was a handyman. He's a fucking contractor. And I made him 
Well, actually, Stuart made him our bitch for the day. That having said, he's a great guy, and I found out his wife is a listener. What? Why? I know. I know. So, Aya, hi. How are you? <laughs> Welcome I don't, to- I don't she- mean why. I just mean why? So I guess he came and he built our shower and heard about the fact that I have this podcast and and found me somewhat amusing for like 15 minutes. I thought he'd be done with us by now. Kind of like John Buchanan. Probably listened for like the first six months after he was off the show. Do you and mean didn't have to- John Buchanan? John, John Buchanan? Yes, that one. Love you, John. Um, well, Greg and I uh, listen still and I'm just so fucking grateful and I wanted to throw out a shout to the guy we have for that because Greg if I had married a handy man we'd never know each other and I want to thank you first of all for everything you did on a Sunday holy your day off that's nuts for us while Amy's husband's lying prone getting poked prodded and drugged uh you just batted clean up in our house and you did all the fucking things that we are incapable of doing and uh thank you i and definitely I, uh, am welcome jealous of the guy i have a rolodex of guys and gals who can come and do things but for some reason since COVID, it seems to be everybody's lead times are crazy and it's difficult or for not them. doing it or not answering or not doing it anymore. or they've relocated to a different state or 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 and it's just it seems like it's never as easy as I have the money. I have the task. You do the work. Can I snap my fingers and make some things align? Like it never, I don't get why it's really so difficult. I don't trust or believe that it is so difficult, even though all of my so practical experience proves that it is. So I'm like, Otherwise. something's wrong. What's the variable? It's got to be me. Like, why is this so hard? <laughs> it's not you. That's all. Blah, blah. Anyway. I sent you a picture this morning of my husband on his new piece of equipment that he acquired from I want to say Craigslist because it feels like a Craigslist item but it might be a marketplace item and that item that piece of equipment is the hydro how would somebody already be selling this it's a brand new thing how would they already be selling it how would they have already bought it and then sold it to not use it your question is how could they have already bought it and failed? <laughs> oh, the so failing quickly. I get. I'm doing that now. No, but to but but first, but doesn't to commit it at least to it. become a laundry holder first? Doesn't it, it become like the a- thing was only invented in 2020? It did not exist before then. It was a brand new to the marketplace thing. So to have it's bought it brand new. since then, and I don't know that anybody ever used it. Right on it and be like, no, and then <laughs> figure out. I need to recoup some of my dollars for this thing instead of just keep it there as the badge of poor purchasing honor. My house is filled with those. I'll tell you that there was no comma in the purchasing price of this hydro. That's a sin. That's right. It was wildly expensive when it first came out. And now, no, I can't get out of the vet without a comma in my bill. And he just bought a three thousand plus dollar piece of equipment with no comma in the price that he paid online mine was less than three thousand but it was it was over two thousand as i recall somewhere in the middle so he went and he picked it up on his way home from the beach and uh now we have all of these pieces of equipment and i feel like i'm the only one who's like let's try this one today what do you want to do today so i started i did a five minute thing on the hydro this morning how did it feel yeah, it's complicated because it's a three-step process. It's like a legs, posture, arms, arms, posture, legs. I don't even know. It's a one, two, three, three, two, one kind of thing. And I just, uh, I could ride. I could, I don't know. I like to switch things up because I feel like you come to a screeching halt if you do the same exercise all the fucking time. So in in the spirit of switching things up, I rode I, I did a little tiny lift thing and then I hung upside down and then I heard the hydro saying, you got five minutes, you got five minutes and you come here for five minutes. And I did five minutes. And by the end of the five minutes, I was like, that is uh, a workout that I wasn't expecting. It's a more intense five minutes than any of those other things that you could be doing. The challenge with any rowing machine or erg or anything of its category is that you can absolutely do it wrong and fuck yourself up. 
in the same way that you can do Pilates wrong on a Pilates machine. It's kind of difficult to do a bike wrong. It's kind of difficult. Oh, I agree. Yeah. So, so in terms of understanding the movement and coordinating yourself so that you are moving, it, you can do crunches wrong and fuck up your neck, fuck up your back, fuck up your shoulders and fuck up true. your front. You can build up the wrong muscles by doing lots and lots of crunches and make your stomach bigger, not tighter and smaller. So this is the risk of any exercise. It's a, it's a fucking fact. You know this. I know. But if you're going to put out effort, which is why I like Peloton, because they'll right. tell you. Like you don't, okay, my favorite one is in the crunch category that you just said. This one coach says, pretend there's an apple or an orange under your chin. You don't want to touch your chin to your chest. That is not, so aim your chin to the seam where the wall hits the ceiling. That is, if you, if you did your crunches wrong, that's how you fuck up your neck. Like I like the coach that tells you don't make juice with that apple or orange. You want space. So that is what I'm assuming hydro is. And also that's where do. to bring it all the way full circle. When you've got five minutes, when you've got 35 minutes, stay in the category of your hydro, because I own one if you didn't pick this up from the way we've been talking, of the beginner, of the training, of the teaching. There are entire modules where the only purpose is to show you form and technique and do it until you are so sick of doing it that you do it automatically, that you develop that muscle sense. memory. Do that before you do any advancement on the machine because once you have established a rowing uh, style or habit or pattern, it is so difficult to break it. So starting off wrong and then trying to fix it later is borderline impossible. Better to take way too long to get started. I mean, wax on, wax off, Karate Kid. Figure out the moves right first. Then progress. And if it, it if you're feeling like you're ready to progress, you're not. Look again. Check your form. Go all the way back to the beginning. Listen very closely. They give you everything you need. The risk is moving slow enough to make sure, because you don't have anyone there watching you, really. You have a videotape of someone watching you. Right. I think the live stuff is also live in the sense that you're just observing them. They're not. Nobody can. It's not a two-way thing. They're not watching you or your technique. So you really oh God, have could to you be fucking imagine if yeah. I was on my bike and the, <laughs> and the instructor was like, Melissa, pick it up. I see I, you. I see you. That's not Stop sweat. fixing your hair. What are you doing? <laughs> like, <laughs> ah, can you imagine? is that a cigarette? What are you doing? Like what's happening? Oh, out there? are you pulling a Melissa? Yeah. Smoking on the Peloton. I don't, I don't that, that makes Smoke me nervous too. on the Peloton. You're going to die with a heart attack now. Okay. We were just talking about fitness and I said in the intro, is it too early for resolutions? <laughs> so one of the thoughts that I've heard over the last 48 hours was, um, think about what you want to happen in the new year. And I'm like, new year? What the, f- are these Jews? Because it is the Jewish new year next weekend. And I was like, are these Jews? No, not a fucking Jew on that bike. Uh, one, one Jew on that bike. So... What do you want in the new year? New year, new year. Resolution. Wait, what's happening right now? And then she said, the bitch said, why are you going to wait? Today is the day to start. And I thought, well, that takes away Mondays. That takes away January 1st. That takes away gym memberships. Huge drive at the beginning of the year. Is there anything that you want for yourself for this new year? Yeah, a vast and great many things. But I would be remiss if I didn't jump in here and say the reason that Mondays and seasonality, back to school, January 1st, first day of spring, anniversary, birthday, wedding event, that all of those triggers are highly motivating is because as humans, gearing up for a start date bakes in a timeline, urgency, and an endpoint. And it's just a studied, research-backed fact that you are X percentage more likely to achieve your goal if you start it on a particular day in alignment with some triggering event than if you don't. Waking up in the morning. Well, making, making this the moment that you make it happen doesn't have any urgency outside yourself. There is a sort of, you know, title carry along motivation that happens when there are... Other circumstances bouncing in the same direction. So, I mean, that's that's just the reality of it. Are there things that I want for myself now or for this year? Yeah, I feel trapped, is fair to say, 
even though that sort of suggests that it's less of my own making than an external force. I feel trapped in the circumstances of my life right now, that everything is stagnating, not doing what I want. I'm, I'm backtracking on things that used to be easy and effortless. I can't gain any momentum for the things that I want to do. And despite having all of the knowledge for what would quickly activate the results I need, I don't have any of the juice to get it done. And that's different than motivation. It's like saying, you don't need motivation to fucking start the car. You need fuel. And I don't have any of that. So, I mean, you need motivation to go on a trip, but you can't get there without the fuel. So it's it's like at a certain point, I'm unwilling to do the things that would generate the fuel to power my own body and mind and soul and all these things. So it's not been the greatest time. It's frustrating to keep pointing at menopause. But guess what? It's also well, a reality. It's a hormonal it's reality. It's also a timed thing. That could be a year to four years. Like you well, don't it's know. A, it's an absolute hormonal reality. And, and the more that I immerse myself in this, because it really feels like being pregnant. It absolutely, there is nothing. It, I mean, it makes you think you're pregnant. The brain fog, the specific sensations within your body, you know, it just your your way your boobs feel, everything, the weight gain that seems to happen regardless of what you're eating, the disrupted sleep, hair in weird places, all of the fucking stuff. It's a hundred percent like being pregnant. And I, you know, it, it's just your body has sort of been taken over by this other chemical hormonal force. So as that relates to what do you want for yourself, I want that to not be an excuse. I want that reality to not be something that I'm giving power to even in the story I'm telling myself that it's because of this reason that I don't feel like achieving the things that before seemed really important to me because now they don't feel important to me. I remember years ago being at my parents river house and walking through the the houses they're they're two rows back from the water they're up high so they can see it but they're two rows back walking between the houses. And for some reason, I was struck with the fact, at what point do you get, my mom had maybe referenced one of her neighbors and said, used to be this or used to be that, and now they do just this. And it occurred to me, when is that okay? When do you decide that what you did is enough and or do you ever get to the point where just being here at the river house on the water, that's my enough. I don't care whether I, as this fictitious person, achieved anything in air quotes or had the success because the whole point of it was to be here at the river house and just to be happy and relaxed. So the thinking was, can you be happy and relaxed? Or are you always thinking, yeah, it would have been nice to have this summit before I sit here. You know, it's just a weird, I'm leaving out a whole lot because I know we don't need to talk about this, but. Well, lots of people are different. I mean, I lived with a guy who had no motor whatsoever, worked for as an accountant for the state of wherever for I don't know I guess it's 35 years now that he's been working there and I married a man who is always looking to better things and to do more and have bigger and like they're just people are very different there are people who would be happy to just have the river house but there are also people who are like I need to earn this I want more how uh, there are jobs higher than mine like who just keep pushing until they are the best of, and I don't think they'll ever, I think I would rather be the person who's happy sitting at the river house than the person who is constantly chasing better, bigger, more. I think I am that person actually, but I married somebody who's the opposite. So I get better, bigger, more by sitting at the river house. So I I don't know. And there's multiple layers to it. Not everybody who is better, bigger, more has any interest in better, bigger, more for its own sake. They simply are incapable of turning off the active mode, right? They are in busy active mode. And at the it's it's like when I was in advertising. The second your campaign is launched or concluded, you're on to the next campaign. And there's a brief moment in between campaigns when you start to feel a relax, a release, and it's so foreign and strange that sometimes that the only thing you want to do is get back in there. Or when you're a performer, get back on stage. You don't want to be off stage. You want to be on stage the whole time. And the time in between being on stage is the thing that's uncomfortable. So for the busy successors of the world, right, the state of action, the state of busy, the state of achievement 
doesn't go away. Somebody who was in retirement but now is running marathons and getting medals in marathons because you can't just go run in retirement. You have to you have to summit, 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 summit. I mean, there are people who are built that way, and I know that I am not one. I I just sort of have this urge somewhere in me that never seems to go away like you're supposed to be why aren't you doing it and then I'm like because this drink is cool and my feet is up so something something is a mismatch and it's been that way chasing for a while. what's next chasing what's next chasing what's next but what's next might be no longer chasing like I did marry the un- energizer bunny and I didn't know it so yeah he got his beach house but it's now who wants to go for a bike ride? We're going to go fishing. Do you want to go for that? I'm like, why don't you? And that's very different than someone take this who. Cocktail. That's very different than someone. I need to have a beach house because beach house equals success. Now that I have it, I can't go to the beach house because I have to have two beach houses because that equals success. That's a different kind of busy. That's someone who is strung out on gathering up the achievements as opposed to, I don't know how to. I can't stop my leg. Right. There's they're two different. Right. Things. Right. Yeah. <laughs> right. OK. My husband has has shaky legs. <laughs> he needs to. <laughs> So what are we doing today? We are waking up leisurely. Wait, right. what? No, that's not how I work. Nipsey Russellin. Yes. Oh, <laughs> Nipsey Russell. Dead. Everybody good is dead. <laughs> I mean, what is going on? Uh, how about let's get back to the purpose of the question. You were asking about resolutions, right? Do you what have are you, one? What are you thinking about? What are, what's got you in this mindset? Where are you... Look, what are you looking forward to? And is it really because your faith tradition is challenging you to stop, take stock, and look ahead? Is it that simple? Or are you no. like, I got a problem. I got to do it. So I feel like your husband a little bit right now because I start preppy preppiness for a colonoscopy at the end of today, tomorrow, and... and oh! Yeah, so... Right, so... Dun, 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 dun. Until and I saw that Ryan Reynolds and and McElhaney, whatever his ra, they had theirs together. Rob which, McElhaney, which yes. I think is adorable. Um, but Rob was like, "Tell me, I'm I'm better than him, right? Like he had what one polyp? I either want none or I want all of the polyps, and you got them all. Like I, I just have to best him. And I'm like, I want to get out of there without cancer. So. I think when you have something in your head, and I did discuss this with Greg when he was here as as my handyman. As as you do, you generally discuss colon pops with your cock man. I, (laughs) he's not just my he's my friend. I like him. Um, I I, having this conversation. Where to stick his finger? Sorry, Greg. Sorry, Greg's wife. (laughs) It's Taya to you. Uh, Having this whole having this whole thing because he just got super healthy he lost weight and like recognized him like what the fuck did you do he said I joined a gym and I row and I'm like three okay. cheers and super envious very happy go get it and again. he runs now I'm like well that's where I think you're a crackhead I don't think these women running at 4 a.m are crackheads because that's the only time they have I think you're a crackhead because you're a fucking runner the Im- the impact of knees and ankles anyway we had this whole conversation about how fitness, about how success, how all this stuff, it's a mental game. 100%. You are the obstacle that stands between you and whatever else. So I understand for me and my health and going to this colonoscopy and and I have this big starting block, right? And it's the colonoscopy. If I can get past that, that is my new, I've had them before, that is my new massive mental block because why bother anything else if you now need to start the fight of your life for your life so you can watch your kids find the joy that we saw our friend's oldest daughter find with all of her people at her wedding. So I just, I can't get past Wednesday. Dear listener, when you hear this on Thursday, call me because I will know what they found and what's going on in there. And I also will, and to answer your question, I will send out a letter I'm writing on uh, come weekend. I will finish up the the letter I'm writing to a, a million physicians and a project I'm working on. And I will push it till I'm going to say Monday because you said that's the part of the mental game. But I have to get past the colonoscopy first. I literally eat nuts like I'm a fucking squirrel. So I can't eat the the basis of my diet for three day, two, three days now. I can't have 
any THC. That's the only thing that helps me sleep. So I can't have any of that because of the way your body metabolizes it and how I'm, they don't want me to have that before the procedure. Nothing with red dye or red color or purple dye or purple color, which includes things like blueberries, grapes, red bell pepper, anything of those colors. And skin. Anything that has a skin on it, you can't have. I so think I was like, it has to be, because I ended up not having my colonoscopy after yeah, all I of know. crazy. Well, I don't know if I Right, because you here. thought it was a walk-in procedure. So no, I ended another. up not having it because there was an insurance snafu, and nobody cares about that, so we're not going to talk about it. But I do, I'm excited now to know what it is and to oh. get it again, to get it properly. Well, the reality is I'm supposed to have it because I was told by my parent uh, my guy says your kids should all fast track getting colonos- colonoscopies. So that's not great information to have because we're prone to polyps. So super fun that I keep delaying this. I've been trying to get it since February. Point being, the thing that I heard from Ryan Reynolds that hung with me when he yeah. was still groggy in the recovery yeah. room. Sipping and the guy, his little and the guy said to him, because you did prep. such a thorough prep. We found one polyp. We got it. It's nothing. Um, That is a TikTok I saw and it's still ringing in my head because you did such a thorough prep. And I'm like, he just drank the same shit everybody else is. I think I should eat an entire box of grape nuts because that shit goes through me like the channel. Like it just goes. That's the wrong thing to do. You got to do blowout. Here's what happened. I know. That's what I am doing. Well, we have we have a friend who also is, from a familial standpoint, highly motivated to make sure that this exam, it, to, that she gets colonoscopy and that the results come back clean. So she did a double prep. She did back to, whatever the prep was that you're supposed to do, she did it twice as long. She did it once and then back to back. So she did it for, if it's supposed to be two days, she did it for four days. Super oh. crystal clean, squeaky clean, let's make some... Let's make some sausages in that in that area. Everything is squeaky clean and came out like a champ. But that's four days of eating butt uh, fuck I'm already nothing, past that. But broth and broth. You know, broth, broth and coffee. You don't get coffee. Like you're not supposed to have caffeine, like all the fucking things. No, yeah, I don't my issue is THC and nuts. That's I'm literally held together. Sweat, THC, dry shampoo and and pistachios it's and very almonds. Weird so, flex. Yep. so <laughs> really, you thought that was a brag? Like that is not at all. Like that's what that's what holds me together. <laughs> Mostly the dry shampoo. If I'm being it sounds honest. like a nice <laughs> white wrap. I made a THC and nuts. What? What? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just, just uh, M M&M and M white wrappers. Uh, vanilla ice. Vanilla ice. Yeah. Millie and Vanilli. the Beastie Boys. Right. <laughs> Millie Vanilli were not white. Sort of. But. But they were not they rappers were, either. <laughs> but they didn't. They were rappers either, or anything really. <clears throat> so, uh, thinking about what to do as a uh, resolution, I mean, yeah, I'm going to try harder. Uh, that's all I got. I'm going to be more supportive and try harder because those are the only things I care about: is being supportive to those I love and around me, and putting the effort into two projects that I'm hoping. There to- it is. Trying harder at what? I'm confused. You don't need uh, so. Having is there a, a is there a general malaise around the circumstances of your life where you feel harder trying is necessary? Or it's I've, the doom t- piles. It's the work piles. It's the it's the mental work piles. It's mm-hmm. the shit. I there are goals I have and let's I look for new obstacles to what stand are, in my give way. Give me a goal. There. Let's pick well, any one. Doesn't have to be the most important one. Just pick a goal that comes to mind. Any one goal. We're going to be specific. Uh, I have a project that I would like to send out into the into the world. A and writing project, yes? A writing project. A creative yes. writing project. Excellent. Okay. Yes. So have you broken it down in terms of action steps? In terms yes. of there's something that I need to do next? Yes. Okay. I know what's next. I've started what's next. And then the brain got caught up in the colonoscopy. So... I have the good to news eat. for you is the brain and the colon are not connected. One is your head, one is your ass. So get your head out of your ass and make moves on your it's creative not a writing hat. project. Right. Your ass is I not a hat. I am one to fucking talk. My point to you is this. You are 90% of the way there by writing down your goal, breaking it down into small action steps, setting a timeline, announcing it publicly, getting some buy-in and support, 
and holding yourself accountable for doing the thing. You've got a target date, Monday, for the action step to occur. Now all you have to do is do it, and then you fucking win. Win! Now we all get a beach house. Just so you know. (laughs) You get a beach house. Just so you know. In the meantime, Wednesday's the colonoscopy. My in-laws come on Saturday because it is the Jewish New Year. Ron, Ron mm-hmm. That one. Or Rosh Hashanah. Rosh Hashanah, yeah. Oh, is that how you say it? Rosh Hashanah? Is that really or, how you say it? Or Rosh Hashanah. It's not English, so you can really say it how you want. I, I don't want say, to say Hanukkah. I, I say want Hanukkah. to say Rosh Hashanah because it reminds me of Shanana. And now I'm really ha- thinking it's fun. It's not a fun holiday. Do you remember Shanana? Yes, Bowser. Bring it. Do, 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 I love that. I met the them. The Jewish New Year. You said do, do. That's all. Blah, blah. Anyway, I'm here to tell you nothing, tell nothing yeah, is more predictive of success than simply writing down the target goal. Writing it down as a goal. That is an 82% likelihood that you will achieve the goal if you write it down on a fucking piece of paper. 82%? That's getting up near birth control success rates. I used to trust that fucking pill, right, to protect me from all manner of evil just because it's like, pop, we can go, wee! Guess what? If all you got to do is write some shit down and you are... Three quarters of the way there. Holy. I would have taken 75%. Yeah. Holy. Yeah. So get your pen, write it down in all the specificity, and write it down every day. Just write it down every day. The mere act of keeping it top of mind is helpful to you in keeping you on task. And I say this because to reference something that maybe got cut out of this episode earlier that flapped out of my face, I have all of the tools, education, and training that I need to be successful. I simply refuse to use them. (laughs) So if I can inspire you to write down your goals, you too. I simply refuse to be successful. Bingo. I draw the fucking line at happiness and success. Anything I can do, I have an active eraser on my pencil and I erase my goals every day. Instead of writing them down, I say, no, 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 no. Can't have that. Can't. No, 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 no. You know that I'm making a deal with God because I don't believe in him, but I am sitting on a toilet right now and I think I'm going to die. Believe in her. Yeah. Okay. That's going to happen tomorrow for me as I start the blowout that, that comes with the excellent purge, the prep, as that doctor beautifully put it. Um, And yeah, I have it written down. You said it. It keeps it at top of mind. Mind is the only thing that keeps you from exercising. The biggest thing. Mind is what keeps you from everything. But it is also the only thing that you need to push through. We just watched the end of Stranger Things that you need to push through. Like, I'm L fight. You've got to fight. And I'm like, "Mm, I think she's got snakes wrapped around her neck and arms and feet. I think now's the time to just exhale. I would. I'd give in. And he's yelling, fight, fight. And I'm like, mm, I'm glad or I'm not out. Relax. <laughs> Go to the light. Let it take let you. It, yeah. Let it happen. <laughs> the snakes that will devour is, you. Yeah. That light is beautiful. You can become evil and more powerful if you let it take you. Yes, please. <laughs> I am all into evil princess. I am all about it. So, but I don't think cancer is something that's something that can make you an evil princess. I think... No. Cancer is the snake. So you don't give in to that. So I am waiting because of my mental block. I really wish that I had studied the brain. I really wish that I had done so many other things with my life (laughs) professionally, meaning to the point where I sit and think about things my parents never encouraged me to do that I could have been really good at on a regular basis. This is like something I do. This is an activity for me. While sitting on the deck of the shore house, I think this could be my retirement from the 11 things my parents did not encourage that I was interested in doing that I could have been really good at. Well, let's tuck into that because there's a whole lot of interesting detail in that action. Number one, give yourself all the gold stars for using that experience as the subtext an inspirational operating system that created the household and the children you have. Because in response to this upbringing, you've decided never again, it stops with me. I am going to encourage. I am going to engage. I am going to make sure that there is an inspiration and 
access to education activities Everything. and resources that are required for you to go off in whatever potential direction or directions you deem fit. Let's go. I am on team you, kids. That's why Let's I'm go. here. Right? So congrats to you. That's no small feat. Next. By the way, are- before you next, before Uh-oh. you next, Uh-oh. I want you to know that Mallory has said to me, why did you encourage us to try everything? Because if you had forced me to just play soccer the whole time, I could have a college scholarship for playing soccer. And it well, was number all one, I had you. in me. Number all one, I had in you. me not yes. to say to her, I've seen you play soccer. You were not getting a scholarship. Bingo. 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 And right. number two, I, was like, I encourage you to try everything because I listen to Shakira. So fuck off. And that's what we're doing. And her hips don't lie. There it is. There it is. Try everything. Try everything. Back to you were talking about your mom not encouraging you to do things. You were talking about your mom. mom not encouraging you to do things. And what I would tell you, in addition to, first of all, you've disrupted that cycle and made uh-huh. life better for your kids and your family just because. Secondarily, you haven't disrupted that cycle if you're still telling yourself and reminding yourself of the realities of that story and then writing it into a fictional story that you're telling yourself every day about how your life is now based on what she did or didn't do. You can buy into it and use it as causal and continue to feed it or you can close that suitcase and leave it by the roadside and go off in another direction. It's a really pretty picture you just drew. I like bags. I don't want to give up a suitcase. I really love luggage, but I, I will leave it there because... I am taking steps and I do recognize the systematic verbal abusive behavior. Call it whatever you want. It doesn't matter. I see it. I broke it on one side. And what you're saying is I need to, she still has that. You need to break it on the other side. And that I will do after Wednesday. What I see is when you're sitting on your porch and you're relaxed thinking, when you're ruminating on, I know why this is. This is because of these reasons, right? I am just saying and suggesting to you, maybe that's a fictional story that you also can write. That when you say, I know why this is, it's because of these reasons. You could also say, I know why this is because I am a happy, contented person who prioritized other things up until now. And meanwhile, this is the perfect time for me to shift and do something else. That one. I want that one. I want that one. So really, she's not a part of the story. She's not a part of getting here. But and I. She, but she's gonna take credit for it if it well, goes. Well, let her well. do it. That's that's. You talk to her once a year on the high holidays. Say haka haka and stay away. That's it. Whatever she's Da-na-na. gonna. <laughs> whatever she's gonna do, let her do it. My point is, you are, you are in charge of the stories that you tell yourself, to the degree that you can be. My so God, any, there goes the mental game again. I, yeah. Jeez. Well, but it it only is interesting because you admitted, and I think that's when. Honestly, why people listen to this fucking podcast is because we admit shit that people are doing anyway. So when you admitted, I have turned this into a pastime for myself where I think about things and the longer that you think about them in that way, you're making them true by writing and retelling that story for yourself, right? And it, it maybe doesn't have to be true. Even if it was before, you can make anything fucking true. You could Donald Trump your own brain. You can make anything true if you say it enough. That's just the truth. That's what happens. So I encourage you to disrupt your thought pattern while you sit on your porch and play with your dogs. Well, first, while I sit on my toilet and purge my body. Super liquid sheet of happiness coming straight out your babungus. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And things like that normally wouldn't upset me because I don't know that they're coming. Right. Like you don't know the sheet of the sheet of poop or we back to like when you. Yeah. When you ate that rental, you became the rental property for that amazing Mexican meal you had or something shrimpy did not taste so great. All of these things. You don't know it's coming. Not only do I know it's coming. So my brain is dreading it. I'm making it happen with everything that ends with lax except lacrosse. The Dulcalax, the Miralax, the Supralax. Poopalax. The poop. Lax. Netflix, Netflix and lax. Chillax. Ass lax. Ass lax. <laughs> I got a duck. Ass lax and I am ready to go. Uh, I definitely, before you put the IV in my arm and the mask on my face for oxygen and the good stuff in my arm, I would like you to know at the, pardon the pun, at the end of this, I'm going to need some flattery because you are the first person who has 
really been in my bunghole since that accident in 86. Yikes. Oh, and 01. Uh, and You're gross. 14. Know, but those were all accidents. That's mm-hmm. never an intentional. Right, right. Um, Get a map. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> How speaking, do you miss? <laughs> speaking of the vulva, I was actually Saturday when my husband was not speaking with us. Speaking of the vulva, yeah. Okay. I call bullshit. On? A friend of mine who not only does not know the word queef, had never heard the word queef, claims after being educated upon this term to never have had a queef. Well, that's, have she, has she ever exercised or had sex or? This is a two child barren CEO yeah, type who's queef. fucking full of fucking shit is what Sorry, I say. She's a, she's a lovely liar, but. That's some bullshit. Everybody knows what this is. We had to describe it at length. It was ridiculous. It was ridiculous. A basic yoga class forces you to breathe in a way that she you claims are that the only time up. she's ever had that was a minor escape of a fart in yoga when she was alone at home doing yoga. And I'm like, first of all, do you know what yoga is? I have <laughs> fafooted so hard. I mean, when people is up on me bending my shit, I squirted one of the poor lady's face. I remember this shit. We were in my house. It was a private yoga session. Poor Jen uh-huh. Jeanette. She's like, good, because I finally like relaxed my legs. Well, I relaxed a lot because it was like, <laughs> and she, her head was like right there. I mean, it's just straight up fart, not a queef. That'd be gross, right? I mean, a fart's kind of gross, but it's I've less. taken a group yoga lesson and, and her at the answer, end of the lesson. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Her, her answer was, that's excellent. You know, the body is doing what it needs to do. It's all natural. And I'm like, lady. If people you fart in your face, right. if people fart in your face and you say that's excellent and natural, I would question your professional choices. She's a fantastic person. I love her. And I am embarrassed that I farted in her face. And I admit it to you here. I don't have anybody come into my house and help with fitness. The only person I have come into my house fixed caulking and and dry and drywall, whatever. He, fi- he fixes everything. And I would never fart in his face. He I did didn't, say, I didn't however. mean to. Yeah. He did say, however, that his wife had gone through some some medical issues and she had some infusions where she needed to sit still for like 10 minute increments or five minutes and then 10, whatever recovery. She listened to our podcast for that. And for that, I am so grateful and thankful. And we're here with you. It's a profoundly big deal. Love it. Also, we got a nice shout out from our friends at Mouse and Weens. If you listened to their whole re- most recent episode, at the very end, I heard my voice. I'm it like, was super a- crazy. I'm like, wait a very minute. Very kind. Yes. Did it switch? <laughs> like, because you know your pod catchers, like they occasionally move on to the next unheard, unlisted. I'm like, I, that's, that's fucking me. And then it was, did you hear that, guys? Those are, that's us on, that's East Coast us is how she described it. Super charming. And I thought, if that is true, first of all. Joelle, get me a fucking sponsor. And if that, <laughs> second of all, if that is true, I am so Done flattered. Done for you dinners thrilled. or whatever their sponsor is. Yep. Yep. Yes. And they're that's so fun. Very local, right? And they're yes. both living in the same house right now, super local. So, hey, if anybody knows of somebody who'd like to sponsor our episode and has a pretty decent product, like, don't, don't send me shit because. I'll do it, but I won't be happy about it because it's money. Yeah, I don't know how well endorsed it'll be if it's like, look, they're just paying me to say this. This shitty thing gave us some money, so we're going to tell you about it. I don't feel like those are the best endorsements. I don't think. I'm trying to think. How much do I want to fight the dialogue that is happening between both of those ears? Well, and how much credit, how much credit, how much purpose, and how much value do you want to give to the story, right? How much right do you want? Value, yeah. And that's those are all very gentle ways of saying blame, responsibility, causality, right? If you just you ignore are those things, sourcing your way through today. Wow, I'm just trying to say, you if must you're know telling all the words, if you're telling yourself the story, it's because you're yeah. getting something out of the story, and it's hard to I'm getting an excuse out of the story. You're, you're I'm getting, getting a, a reason. You're getting to put someone. Off what I know. Yep, it's not you. It's that. So let's let's pretend for a second 
But I'm that good. Didn't I could do this. I could that do you this were, shit in a well, second. Pretend but. the opposite is true. Pretend you were encouraged to do absolutely everything. And that led you exactly to here. And it all worked out exactly the way that it should. And that Go this ahead. moment is still perfect and ripe for the very next thing that you're supposed to do. Now what? What does that story do for you? Does that help? Does that feel good? I don't know. Yes. I'd have to believe it first. Yeah. Okay. Feel then good. then write a new story. Maybe you had alien snakes wrap around and you stabbed them with your giant colonoscopy suction and then everybody won and there's no polyps. What is that story? Like, just keep writing the fucking stories until there's one that actually works. That's what I'm saying. If you're telling yourself a story that doesn't feel good, only be but aware that it's a story telling you're telling yourself. Aren't we all telling ourselves a story at some point, at every point that doesn't 100%. feel good or occasionally feels good or but? A hundred percent. Yes. But I do think we forget yeah. and lose sight of the fact that. It's not the truth. It's the story. We're it's telling a story. Ourselves. It's a story that you're okay. telling yourself. It doesn't necessarily, even if it's, if it's recapping what happened and listing facts, there's still a way to recap or list those facts or drop those facts and write the story in a way that serves you. Like it, it gets a little bit muddy when you're trying to overcome something that ain't great. So I'm just suggesting that you have a lot of power in this situation, as you know, because you're very powerful in your life. So apply that to your own taskmaster. Make your list your bitch. Yeah. All right. I honestly feel like I honestly feel like I have like a a, a moment, a breakthrough at the end of all of our episodes. I'm and I'm feeling like, all right, I can retell that story. I what? can be the hero of this yes. fucking story. 100%. I don't have to be I don't want to say the victim, but I don't have to be held back by a story that I've been telling myself true 90 percent, true 40 percent, whatever it is like, why? Why can't that dialogue between those ears be a motivational one? Why is it that Cory Booker's TikTok is the only thing that makes me say, yeah, that? Like, why? Right. Why can't I tell that story between the ears, behind the eyes? And the only thing that I'm suggesting here is it might be easier to think of it this way. She doesn't have to be a character in the story. If you just drop her as a character, how does that change the story? Right? Right. You're writing a story that has you as a character, that has her as a character. Well, what if she's no longer in the play? If she's just out of it, what fills that void? You do. You fill it with whatever you want. So in my head, and I know we need to end this, but in my head, well, if she's not in the story, what is the reason that I've done nothing until now? Why so is it that you've done nothing? Now you rewrite the story. Why, why would you claim that where you are in your life is doing nothing? I, I challenge that. Do you ever watch Big Brother? No. Actually, it came on after something we were doing, probably the football game. 60 Minutes. What? What is that show? It's weird. They trap like 20 peep trap. People apply for. It's like Survivor, but They're not but good people. Lazier. They're not attractive. They seem shifty. Some, it's weird. They try to make them attractive. Well, they, the one uh, guy had like three color hair and it looked oh, slimy and he's wearing like a cap. He grows on you. A lot of things grow on him, and he grows on like you. Like a so. wart. Okay. Like mm-hmm. a wart. Yeah. yeah Fungus. Gross, whatever. Gross. Gross. Um, so I, I feel like there are people in that story that actively do things and change their futures, and there are some that passively watch and try not to get hit with shrapnel. I think if I retold my story, I don't have a reason to have been less aggressive, focused, uh, goal oriented I think the story in my head has kept me from doing many of those things and just been that state accountant for so many years for so long and only taking the promotion that well it's time you've been here 10 years so here's the next promotion you didn't ask for it you didn't work for it you didn't stay late or work whatever it just it's your turn so I feel like the things that I've gotten it's just been my turn working in that office this is something I'm reaching for, for which I am reaching. This is something instead of accepting I'm uh, going for, that I'm, I'm, give me a word since you have them all. It's, I'm. It is a, very exciting and risky to put yourself out there. When you identify what you want and then strive to achieve it, yes. that's really scary. And so well, it's I'm, easier to yeah. never say, I want this. Oh, Be- I, yes. It's yes. much easier to never say I want this and it's much easier to say I can't have this because dot 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 sit on the porch and come up with reasons. So the reality is 
if she is no longer a reason why you can't have this. Right. She is I not. don't want you to fill the recently incised abscess. Yes. I don't want you to f- I don't want you to flood reasons. in that punctured area with well, if she's not the reason I can't have this, there must be reasons I can't have this. I want you instead to flood it with antibiotic that says, I'm now you it. can have it. I'm gonna not, pa- Now that you don't have cancer, I'm going to pack it with. Not reasons for why you didn't or can't or don't deserve or never will or haven't yet or won't next week. None of those are what's going in there. What's going in there is here are all the reasons why you can have it and why it's already happened. The, the law of attraction says... Once you start behaving as if you already have it, the the law of attraction literally is if you are in a state of working on something, it will conspire in favor of working on it. If you are in the state of wanting to lose weight and working to lose weight, it will perpetually keep you in the state of working and wanting to lose weight as opposed to being in the state of a thin person, of a healthy person, of a successful person. And then that's it will what put can get you in, in the state. And block exactly. You. Yeah. If you're constantly trying to earn money versus being a rich person, like it's those subtle shifts are ridiculous. But how many times in your life have you seen the kismet, seen the alignment of even a dollar amount? Oh, goodness. Here's a bill for nine thousand dollars. And then magically, two days later, you receive an unexpected something for nine thousand dollars up or down or across or this way over and over and over. And always it's always, always, always happening. You are always uh, you know, the Jerry and the Elaine one where there's up Jerry, down Jerry, and Jerry in the middle. Even Steven. Even Steven, yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. It's, it's Here, look, abso- here's a $20 bill. I'm just going to throw it out the window. <laughs> she grabs his head. Yes. What the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> hey, guys, I just found I, a $20 but bill. But, I mean, I, I absolutely, it's the truth whether you believe it or not. So it's happening. If you want to believe it, you can activate it. If you want to ignore it, it's happening to you. All I'm saying is tap into it on a very, very micro level and see what happens. Remove her from a character in this story and fill it with something good. Don't fill it with a different kind of doubt. Don't fill it with a different kind of reinforcement that or pus. not putting yourself out there equals told you. Not ya, getting rejected. Told you. not getting. Well, the, the reality is you are absolutely going to get rejected. You are absolutely going to fail. And you should be, some people say you should be, that's the goal. Collect as many rejections and failures as you can. That it's not about success. The goal is how many failures can I get? How many rejections can I get? Because when you're chasing those, the successes automatically happen and they happen more often because failure is just a part of it. Anyway. Right. Nobody's going to go follow through with a script that they never received. So I'm living I mean, proof of that. <laughs> <laughs> I sit around and often complain that no one has produced my movie that I have ne- that I have yet to finish or submit. Why haven't they made my movie, Melissa? That's not your failure. That is theirs. <laughs> um, I think it's amazing that you can sit here and give me really solid, solid advice. I know it all. And and I you know it all. I do none of it. I do and none of it. I refuse I, to practice. Seems like a hint of pride in there that you refuse to. I choose not to succeed. Okay. So if you encourage me and. <laughs> yes. And something for once or twice in my life actually works out and something good He's, happens. Because I am encouraging you on the path that you were already successful on and it eventually occurs. Yes. Next. What? Can I seal you? Because I know that you'd work hard for, harder for me than you would for you. It is you so have much for you. easier for me. And I don't know why this is. And you can ask anybody if you don't already have it a million times to evidence just from knowing me, it is so much easier for me to sell other people than it is myself. I, I, I think that's a, common, but I don't, yeah. I don't. And, and it, let me say it this way. I get more excited. I get more activated. Motivated. I put mm-hmm. more energy into selling the wares and businesses of the friends that I have because I they're my friends so I automatically admire them because I'm friends with people who are better than me. So that's it goes together. It's a rule actually. Uh, it's yeah. just the way it happens. So I am more motivated than they are about their own product. All of them regularly tell me you're you're overselling it. You're just not they're not that great. Or maybe not we don't well that might not be true. Like I'm <laughs> I'm such a hype man for them. They're like back off. And I'm like if I'm more excited about you than yes. you are about you, what's that say? Come on. And now like I'm going to get you hyped about you. We all wear for you. your brittle. <laughs> and that shit tasted good. Um, all right. Anyway. 
we also got advice for you that's not just on the, okay, well, start moving. Um, we got advice from a dear friend and dearest listener about your massage therapy, about that. how to get start, start getting back on the self-care wagon, horse. I don't know. Pick a fucking analogy. She said, sweet Anya, nobody gives a fuck who's well, massaging think, you about your body. This is an article from a massage therapist Get out of your standpoint. fucking head. Nobody's looking at you. Like we're not, that's not what it's about. I guess I just, I don't know how much it's going to change things. And I was so moved to see that post in our group Brill Ob Squad on Facebook. I was so excited. Do you hear and that's I, your listener? Brill Ob Squad on Facebook or Brilliant Observations. Get extra or, content. Or she just fucking writes us at brilliantobservations at gmail.com because this woman knows how to get through, be heard, and actually be spoken about on the regular. Thanks, Anya. Well, I don't know if this changes things, and I was I was too shy to say it last time, and I was going to put this in the group, but since you've mentioned it here, I'll just say it. The thing really that makes me self-conscious is for the first time when I rolled over and it was sort of cold in the room and I realized, oh, my nipples are hard and they're probably super visible through this super tiny sheet. And that's creepy to be in this room with this dude rubbing on me and like doink, doink. Like it was just, I was like, that's wrong. Get me out of here. I'm never coming back. So yes, I'm self-conscious about rolls and flab and how gross it is. And in my head, I look like fucking Halle Berry laying there. So it's not, you know, Charlize Theron. Like I'm not, I don't visualize such different head spaces I'm in there thinking he must be so lucky at this long supple body none of it's true right so anyway and then magically I flipped over and it was like it felt like I I don't even it didn't feel like this but right now what's coming to mind is like is this a situation where it's like a happy ending thing like I was just like this is so gross I don't ever want to be a part of this again that's just Nobody's gross. ever, ever, ever offered me a happy ending, and I don't know how I would say no. What? <laughs> Stop it. Swat? <laughs> Come on now. You That's heard about favorite. the creepiest one. You heard about the creepiest one from our friend who ended up, uh, it's, I don't know why I'm trying to be coy, Aaron's friend ended up getting like a gross, ha- like a happy ending that she didn't ask for. And then at the very end, he like went down and was rubbing like the top of her head and he leaned in and he went, happy birthday, Michelle. And like, it, it was like so gross. The whole my, thing. It my name is Janice. Or whatever her fucking <laughs> name is. I was like, Bleh! oh God, violate, violate. Uh, no, no. So it was about the nipples. And I don't feel like I really even pay attention that I have them, but I did then. Okay. Why are you grabbing your nipples? They're there. They're, I don't know, because they're perfect. They um, are because they are reactive. <laughs> and the sheet was thin. And I suddenly decided, I'm alone in a room in the dark with a man whose hands are physically on me. Get the stop out. No. First no, of no, all, if the no. man thing bothers you, find a woman. Second of all, it's like me going for a colonoscopy. How many assholes do you, I'm going at 6.30 in the morning for a 7 a.m. procedure She's Erect see nipples are a, a sexual response. People. If you're in there and you start having an orgasm when you're doing the colonoscopy, I think you should be self-conscious. Well, first of all, my biggest fear is that I'm going to get my period. But my what? second, <laughs> okay. I don't want to talk about it. But my <laughs> second, but it, like, wow, erect nipples <laughs> are a reaction to weather. It's not just an excitement. I mean, or you can't relate orgasm and nipples. They're two totally different Two totally different. Yes, yes, but they both fall within the category of response, of programmatic response. Yes, to know. how cold like it. it is in that room. <sighs> Look, okay. they don't give a fuck, and that was Anya's point. They don't give a fuck. They don't even know you're there. They are go. They're working muscle groups. They're working body quarters. They're doing however they're doing it. The fact that even when people talk to them, I'm sure they're put out because in their heads. They have. Oh, I would love to have zero relationship whatsoever. Let's be silent. Yeah, please. I'm not here I don't to make have, yeah. personality wise, I don't have that ability, but <laughs> I would fucking love that. Like, it's just not in my wheelhouse. <laughs> and oh. once you talk once, the lovely woman who works at Hand and Douche, she just says, Hand and Douche. That's a different kind of service provider. She's like, I've been looking forward to this all day. You're so funny. I'm like, I am. Not, I'm not sorry. on stage for you, for God's sake. Yeah, yeah. Dear listener, we love you. You know how to get to us. Uh, I hope we know how to get to you. Just mention um, Melissa's mom. Just, 
<laughs> Fuck you. See what I did there? I you got to you. I see what you did there. <laughs> hey, I know that you're hearing this on Thursday. Wednesday, just know I had a tube in my keister and hey, I'm not happy hey, about hey. it. And Tuesday, I was on the turlet all night overnight because, you know, that is fucking gross and not me. That I don't know how gross. to make poopy bubbles. Something. You did poopy a great bubbles. job. Oh, oh, by the way, and our friend Mark, uh, dear listener, Troy, he sent on our group, he put out some celebrities on the toilet making great possible oh my God. Potty art for me, and for that I'm wildly grateful. I love it, guys. When you participate, you know me, and I don't know you, and I want to know you better. So, give me your potty art. Tell me your potty stories. Amy wants to hear none, none of, of it. it. Correct. <laughs> she wants to hear none Super of it. Super out. Frank Zappa taking a deuce. Not my jam. Oh, it was great. I love it. I a love nude all of it. Zappa deuce. Not for love me. It. Not for me. Did you see the whole website he sent of oh, celebrities on the toilet? Because I know Elvis died there, so how much would that be worth? Oh, just such great stuff out there. We love you. We want to hear from you. You're laughing at me. <laughs> I'm going to take that as a compliment. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, thanks for listening. Until next time, we love you. Bye. Bye. And I feel it only halfway And before I even argue I am looking out the window At somebody coming in It is always nice to see you Says the man behind the counter To the woman who has come in She is shaking her umbrella And I'm trying not to notice As she looks the other way And she is straightening her stockings Her hair has gotten wet